If you're a beginner who's learning to code, then you might have wondered at least at one point in your journey if you should buy a course. In this video, I'm going to give you three reasons why you should not. So let's just jump right into reason number one. Do not buy a course if you have unrealistic expectations from it. As a beginner, it's hard to estimate how much time it's going to take for you to learn a certain programming language or to learn a certain tech stack. And this problem is made worse by people who are trying to take advantage of you, essentially selling you a get job quick scheme in the name of courses. If you're a complete beginner with zero knowledge of coding and you're trying to get into a course expecting that it will help you go from zero to a full stack developer in just four months, then I'm sorry to tell you, but you've been lied to. I personally don't believe that it's practically possible. Why? Well, let's just think of it logically for a minute. To learn full stack development, here are the topics that you'll need to cover. So HTML, CSS, JavaScript, some sort of front end framework or library like React, Keeping it simple, let's choose JavaScript based backend framework as well. And you'll also need to learn about databases and also some sort of version controlling system like Git. So these topics that I've listed are just the basic surface level stuff. So let's try to put a timeline to these topics. So all of these topics now take roughly about four months. So looking at this timeline, someone who does not know anything about development, you might believe that this looks somewhat practical. But there are a lot of things wrong with this. Let's start with HTML and CSS. We're going to spend two weeks to learn both of them. So let's say you spend one week learning HTML and one week learning CSS. Maybe you'll pick up enough HTML, but for CSS, one week is too less. There are so many topics, especially for beginners, that may be confusing. And if you've not had enough practice with these topics, you're eventually going to get more and more confused as you progress towards more advanced topics. Then talking about your first programming language, three weeks. Again, I don't think this is a very realistic timeline. Let me tell you why. Let's talk about universities. You spend one semester, which is about four to six months long, learning your first programming language. The argument that you could give here is that you're learning about these different subjects at the same time as well. If learning five subjects are going to take you five months, then at least one subject should take you one month for sure. And here you've just given it three weeks of just learning new things every single day about a first programming language without spending much time practicing or playing around with your first programming language. And then right after that, you jump into a framework. The issue here is that you don't know HTML or CSS enough. You don't even know JavaScript enough. And now you've jumped into something even more advanced. So four months is not at all a practical timeline. You're quickly moving on to the next topic without having much hands-on practice or without building projects with the things you've learned so far. Okay, so what should you do instead? First of all, do not enter into a course with having the hopes of learning all of these things in just four months. It's going to take you much longer to properly learn these things and do enough practice with these so that you actually retain all the information that you've learned. It sounds very enticing for beginners to hear things like become a full stack developer in four months. It is a long process and you should not be trying to rush it. If you're deciding to buy one, just have a more practical approach to these things. There's a very interesting article that I found a while back. It's called Learn Programming in 10 Years. If you're interested, I have left a link to it in the description box below. Reason number two of why you should not buy a course is because you're trying to buy a dream instead. A course in itself has no value. It's just a means to an end. Why do I say that? Well, because two people doing the same course can have drastically different outcomes. One person doesn't make any progress at all, whereas the other one gets the outcome of their dream. And then there might be a third person who did not take that course at all, who maybe learned from free resources and still achieved the outcomes that they wanted. Course is just a structured approach to learning. It's designed to impart the knowledge and the skills that are necessary to achieve your own goals or dreams. So a course is just a means to an end and it's not the only means to that end. So you don't need to buy an expensive course at all or you don't need to buy a course at all. You could still learn from free resources. If you have the money and the resources, then sure, why not go buy a course, but don't feel pressured that this is the only way to 
to achieve your dreams. Yes, some courses may be better than others, but the major differentiating factor is you. You are the one who's going to determine if you're going to be successful while taking this course or not. You determine your own success and you determine your own journey. So what should you do? Well, first of all, avoid courses that are marketing themselves as the way to achieve a high salary job or a course that will help you make a lot of money. Unless that course is also providing you with a placement sell, buy a course for the material, for the knowledge, for the skills that it's teaching you, not for the hopes and dreams that are attached to it. Reason number three of why you should not buy a course is because you are expecting that the course will teach you everything. You're thinking that now that you have bought a course, you don't really need to do anything yourself. You just have to follow instructions, do whatever the instructor is telling you and you'll be good to go. You're essentially expecting the course to spoon feed you everything. First of all, no course is going to teach you everything and no one practically can your responsibility you're not in school anymore you're not learning with the purpose of giving a test at the end of it there's no set syllabus and there's no set curriculum it's not that only what has been taught in the course will be the things that are going to be asked in an interview or are the things that you're going to need in practical life you need to get over that mindset because now the possibilities of learning is endless so unless you're doing your own research unless you're doing your own learning apart from what is being taught to you then you're going to be at a disadvantage and you can't blame anyone but yourself you need to learn how to learn things by yourself you need to learn how to google search and you need to learn how to use chat gpt a video a tutorial a course a blog post is just a starting point you need to go deeper into that concept yourself so you are responsible for your own learning, no matter if you decide to learn from a paid course, from a free course or from free YouTube tutorials. So with that being said, I am not at all anti-courses. I've bought courses myself and I sell a few courses of my own as well. I just wanted to give you a clear picture so that you could take a more well-informed decision if you want to buy a course or not. I've already talked about the reasons why you should not buy a course, but now I want to talk about a few reasons why you might think of buying a course. Well, first of all, if you have the money, sure, go ahead, buy a course. Otherwise, it's not at all necessary for you to buy resources to learn something. You can learn enough, at least up to a level from the free resources out there. Learning by yourself may be a slower process because not only you're trying to figure out what to learn, you're also trying to figure out where to learn them from. Whereas in a course, it's more of a structured approach where all of the videos, all of the topics are at the same place. So you don't have to look around trying to figure out what to learn. If you're just looking for a structure of the topics that you want to learn, then I want to tell you about a very cool resource called roadmap.sh where you can find a roadmap for learning a lot of the different technologies in tech. And and it also has a lot of resources where to learn them from. I also create my own roadmaps slash guides for people who want to self-learn but they are just looking for a structured approach to learning things. So my study plan involves a roadmap and a tracker on Notion along with different resources where to learn from as well as practice resources. If you want to check it out, I've left a link to them in the description box below. One more reason why you might want to buy a course is because a course comes with a community and mentorship, which otherwise is frankly hard to find from free resources. If you're just looking for mentorship, then at the moment, a lot of different software engineers and different professionals do actually give mentorships as a service if you want to pay for it. Another advantage of having a course, it could be a free course or a paid course, is that it might be accompanied with different projects or exercises which are usually not there if you're trying to learn from simple YouTube tutorials. Even courses on Coursera or edX do have certain projects or test exercises to practice what you've learned. So that's the end of this video. I hope I made an honest comparison between learning from paid resources versus learning from free resources. I kept getting a lot of questions around these topics and I had so many opinions about it. So I just wanted to put them all together into a structured video. I hope this video helped you get more clarity on this subject. I'll see you guys in the next video.